Good afternoon, everyone. Glennis Archer from Providence here. Hope you guys had a great day. I just wanted to add something as it came to memory. I wanted to share some information about banking experiences and banking in Georgetown. Um, I'm sure many of you who are thinking about remigrating would want to know how, what are the basic requirements about going about opening a bank account or even having business here, business accounts. So I thought I'd touch a little bit on that today. Um, opening a bank account can be quite a tedious pr process. So it's best that you have all the documents you need up front. If not, you can find yourself running back and forth. So um, I will just give you guys a minute to um, gather yourself together and then we'll get started. Okay. All right, so there are four major banks in Georgetown, I would say. Uh, Republic Bank, which is a Trinidadian bank. Citizen Bank, uh, GBTI, which is a Guyanese bank which is uh, Guyana Banking, Trade and Industry. Uh, there is also um, Scotiabank, which we all know about, part of the Nova Scotia branch banking system. And then there is Demerara Bank. That's another local bank. Now they vary in size to size. When I chose banking, um, I made an error because I chose a bank that had I was looking for a bank that had a lot of facilities. So I was looking for a bank that had a lot of banking locations and a lot of ATMs. It turned out um, after trial and error and many years of trying to make it work with their customer service, it, it turned out it didn't fit my banking needs. I have very recently, as recent as two years ago, transferred all my financial matters to another banking institution. I won't name it. Um, I feel free. This is not an ad for any of the particular banks, so I'm not preferential and I'm they're not asking me to do this. But I can tell you there are basic requirements for all of them. Do your research and look around and make your decision. Go onto their websites and see what, what it is that you need. Now, what, one thing I'm going to talk about are the requirements needed to open a bank account. First thing you're going to need is a valid ID card or your passport. You will find doing business in Guyana that your ID card is the go-to. It is the thing. It is as important here as our social security card and social security number um, is to those in North America. You're also going to need proof of address. Now, proof of address could be a utility bill if you are already renting a place here or a sealed postmark letter. And that's a bit of a difficult one to get because... What they want is that a mail addressed to you at the address of which you reside, postmarked and unopened. So, I mean, that could take a while because it means you're depending on the local postal service, which is not efficient. So I would imagine the best way to go would be a utility bill. You're also going to need, if you're working or if you're self-employed, you're going to need, um, well, if you're self-employed, you can have tax documents. But if you're working, you would need a letter from your employer, an employment letter. And what, it, what would be contained in this is an outline of when you were hired, your position, your salary, and whether or not this is full-time employment or short-term contractual employment. These are the kind of things they need to satisfy themselves that you are a stable um, member of society. And your TIN certificate. Now, your TIN certificate is T-I-N, T-I-N. That's your tax identification number. Now, you get this from the GRA office, which is located in Camp Street in Georgetown. And the TIN certificate will is an actual certificate. And um, you will bring that into them. Now, doing business in the, both the private sector and the public sector, meaning government ministries, they depend so much on original documents. So original documents meaning they want you to bring the documents into them so they can authenticate it, then they'll make the copies if applicable. Sometimes they just want to see them, make a note of them, and return them to you. 
So you will see if you're around Georgetown area and you, you're in banks or you're in government offices, you're in the NIS office, you're at the post office, you're trying to transact business, you'll see people walking around with manila envelopes. And inside these manila envelopes are your sacred documents, documents that you need in order to even get someone to sit down and try and begin to do some transactional business with you. And then, of course, you'll need your deposit. Now, once you have all these documents, yes, you'll be able to open an account. Now, all the banks have what I refer to as a foreign, let me refer to my notes if I may, a foreign currency account. Now, a foreign currency account is obviously, as the name states, an account that you can open with foreign currency, whether or not that be Canadian dollars, British pounds, or US dollars. Um, your money is held in this account in this state according to the daily rate at the time which is being executed by that particular financial institution. And if you want to make withdrawals, you can make withdrawals in the currency that you wish. So if you, if i.e. Canadian dollars, British pounds, uh, Japanese yen, or US dollars. So that's a foreign currency account. The business counts are very similar, and I will go, to, go through that the details of that on another video. But what I will say is the requirements that I stated are the requirements for opening any account on any one of the large banks in Georgetown. So let's just review them as I summarize once again. Number one, a valid national ID card and or passport. I should say that the institutions prefer lean towards the ID card. Number two, proof of address, whether or not that be a utility bill in your name or a letter addressed to you at your residence, postmark, date stamped. Now this cannot be older than three months old and remember it must not be opened. Thirdly, if you're self-employed, your, your, um, your tax returns, if you're, if you're, employee, you're an employee, an employment letter from your employee signed by someone, either the controller of your company or your HR manager or the HR director stating your position, how long you've been there, how much you make, and whether or not this is a contractual employment or whether or not this is um, full-time employment. And last but not least, your TIN certificate. I hope I've been helpful. Uh, we will review these from time to time, but as I think of important things, I just wanted to come online and share. And as a footnote, um, please make time and mentally prepare yourself when you're going into these banking institutions, whichever one it is that you choose to place your money. This can take up to two hours. And I know that sounds extreme and often absurd when you've come from a society where speed is, a, is, is important and efficiency. But because there are so many checks and balances, this, because the system is still very much a paper system, because the system is um, double checked and so forth, the process can take a very, very long time. So just be very patient and allocate a certain amount of time to transact your business when you're opening a new account. Have a great day. Bye.